Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, I'm kind of excited. I got um, my web server, <clears throat> which I'll show you the hardware in a few minutes here, um, running completely off the grid on solar powered, so to speak. And you'll see what I mean by that. It's actually a. Uh, well, I'll show you later on. But I uh, wanted to show you how quickly it's loading. Um, here, I. This is actually uh, started at Google, some someplace on Google. I don't even know where. But um, so I'm just going to load the website for the first time here. And so that's pretty quick. And uh, there's a product page. I'll put a link to this here. Uh, if you need any product, feel free to buy it from my website. <laughs> a little plug there. But uh, it's kind of neat that this is all done with a. This is all on a Raspberry Pi. So for under 50 bucks, you can have a, um, a computer that's capable of running a web server. And now it's not even using uh, grid power, it's a battery. Or, yeah, it's actually after a battery and a solar power setup, which I'll show you here in a second. And I'll put the links to this in the description of the video if you want to check it out. Um, but it's, you know, it's pretty snappy. And, um, anyways, let me pause the camera and I'll show you the hardware setup for what you're looking at there. So in uh, this room here, I got my access point, which uh, goes out through a messy cable modem out to the internet there and uh, so part of the challenge is from this room how do I get my Raspberry Pi my solar setups in another room and I was thinking punch a hole in the roof there and run some cable over but um, the nature of the way my roof is designed um, and plus I don't have a ladder to get up there right at this moment it makes that a little bit kind of a hard option um, I could either run the network cable from here from here to the other room or I can um, run the power from the other room to here. Either way, I'd have to go through the roof. My house is built on a slab, so I can't go underneath. So, anyways, I'll show you where the other room is. So here's my little uh, uh, cable set up. The power comes in through the outside solar panels right there, through a wire. Comes down, and I got it. This is my charging unit right here. And then here I got two uh, deep cell batteries, so I charge those. I don't have, it's just a cheap Harbor Freight one. I don't have a lot of uh, power, um, so by having this, it kind of like fills up over time, and then I can run it for a long time. And uh, and this is not the f best efficient way to do this. This is just what I did to get it up quick and dirty running. And if I can find, I've got a, a, a unit that I could plug into the post somewhere in the house and it's a like a light, cigarette lighter looking deal and then you can just get one of those cigarette lighter um, to USB connectors and then can run it and there's my Raspberry Pi straight up to the Raspberry Pi so that's probably how I'll do it in the future but right now there's the power cable and it's just going to run down there back out to a um, power strip and that's it right there and the power strip is plugged into my transformer which is a horrible way to do this um, but like I said, it's quick and dirty because it doesn't make sense to go, if you don't have to, to go from DC to AC to actually back to DC on the board. Um, but that's just kind of how everybody builds everything. So, and this is just a little transformer. Again, another loss. Every time you have a transformer, you have a loss in power. So you got a loss in power here, a loss in power here. But that being the size, it works. And let me show you a couple of things I got going on. As I said, here's my Raspberry Pi. And um, it would have been nicer to use an Ethernet cable, but again, I'd have to like run it up and punch it through the ceiling up here. And um, I'm not ready to do that at this point. But I just have an external USB antenna right there. And every time you see a flasher, that means it's being accessed by something. Um, and it's just plugged into a USB port right here. And so what's cool is this, like I said, this whole thing is running virtually... It's not even pulling enough draw to kick on the fan, so it runs really quiet. My voltage right now is at 12.8, which is okay. And again, it's being converted to AC and going through my transfer, powering the device, and using my deep cells here. So it's been running for a couple of days now. I'm having a little bit of an issue. Like if I lost power, which shouldn't be able to do because it's a battery backup. But if I did, like let's say I knocked off the... um 
the power connector or something or we had a failure of some sort. Um, and I had to repower this. Or let's say I rebooted it, like I updated a kernel or something. And I rebooted it. I'm having a hard time getting the wireless to come up on its own. I actually have to plug in an Ethernet cable and then magically the wireless will start working. So it's probably something with the OS or I got it configured wrong or something. But once I do that, um, then I get it working. So there's the wireless connection going to that access point that you saw in the other room. Anyhow, I hope uh, you find this kind of cool. I think it's kind of neat that this this is what you were, you can access this through the internet and you're actually connecting to this little box. It's got a micro SD card, you can't see it, it's in the back. And that's where the hard drive is essentially for this deal. And it's just pretty fascinating that if you access this, you're actually accessing this device on the internet. Um, I think it's pretty cool and it's not plugged into grid power, it's all running off a of solar battery backup. And uh, anyhow, um, I hope you like this video and find it interesting. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment below. And if you like it, hit like on the, give me a thumbs up there. And if you subscribe, you'll see more videos as they come out. Thank you for watching.